There is no way in the word of God that suggests that master is a sin. Pastor Abel Damina may not have too many friends in the body of Christ ever since he turned a new leaf from his purported transactionary gospel to what he now preaches now, the message of grace, if I'm to put it that way. Now, I have been preaching the message of the cross for more than 20 years. So in that account, Damina is a newcomer. It's not as if he hasn't been preaching grace, but taking a very significant part of what he was known for, he would say like I used to be Baba of that particular gospel. He was doing Pentecostal voodoo for many, many, many years by his own admission. Indeed has got him to be under serious scrutiny. And um, last week, uh, Pastor Chris gave me this other information that can a, can a junior now who is senior is how many years in ministry? 60 years in ministry. Pastor Hagin is 60 years in ministry. 60. So I was telling him time flies. So. Now one particular fault as well I know that really have been speaking against his person is the remnant community. Now for those who have been here longer, we are not new to the likes of Apostle Aaron Osai and the rest of course in that particular clan. We have talked about clans and carcasses as well when it comes to Christian communities and this particular clan is actually well known for their presence and vocality when it comes to speaking against what they observe to be ills in the body of Christ. So recently I came across a video that happens to be purported that Apostle Aramo Osai was referring to the likes, not the person, of Pastor Ebo Damina when he said this. So when you hear a preacher say, if you are hooked up on pornography, <laughs> continue watching, but keep coming to church. He works for Satan. You can't say it, but I'm called to say it. Now that actually is a strong statement, but like you heard him say as well, he's called or he has the authority to say those kind of words about anybody or someone that is purportedly saying those kind of things or would I say encouraging Christians like he will put it in his words lasciviousness. If I allow you, you become lascivious. Now of course, Pastor Chris talks about lasciviousness in this video. An unrestrained way of living. Talking about lasciviousness here. We have an interesting conversation of course here today. Pay attention. Your idol is not God on this platform, only Jesus is Lord. Let's have our intro, it's been a while. Thank you for being part of the community. So recently, Apostle Aramosai was speaking about things or he's been speaking about things trending in the body of Christ and even though he doesn't get to mention a name which is also very important just like he talked about Pastor Chris in this particular context listen to this video a great man that rose in our midst in this nation mighty teacher of faith in my own opinion no Nigerian ever taught faith like that man once upon a time I saw this same man on Facebook in a 40 minutes lecture trying to justify how masturbation is not a sin and he was doing it with all the anointing, all the beauty that he has. I saw another edition of that teaching recently. How did this great teacher of faith experience such corruption? A 40 minutes apologetics teaching to convince the body of Christ how that masturbation is self-service. You are doing it by yourself, with yourself, all alone. How does that amount to sin? What if I take an idol and I'm worshipping an idol alone? I'm not worshipping for you, I'm not trying to kill you, I'm not pursuing you. It's just me and my idol. And I knew them before they had what you are not aware of. And what, maybe some of you that experienced masturbation before you broke free. Only some people will know that it's an unclean spirit. For a preacher of that standing to come in, to condescend to that state. Um, we need living water. Now, if you were listening to that particular message of him speaking, you have a brain sitting on your head. Probably your spirit is even activated enough that you are aware of things happening in the body of Christ that you can tell who he is talking about, even without him mentioning a name. Yes, of course, he gives a very good commendation about the person of Pastor Chris when it comes to, you know, him teaching faith. But he says exactly what he has to say with respect to what he believes to be corruption in the body of Christ, or would I say for such a person of that manner to be saying that masturbation itself is not a sin inherently. Now, of course, I, I have taken my time to watch the videos of Pastor Chris and that, but and I always tell my audience this, there are some statements that you make that in any context you try to actually paint it without someone even 
thinking of listening to you in full context, that particular statement itself is wrong. Now, holding the thought on what he says about the person of Pastor Chris, let's look at this whole concept of Pastor Ebod Amina and why this particular statement by Apostle Aramosai is said to be referring to Pastor Ebod Amina. This is what he said himself. In his own words, he said, All with open face, beholding the glory of God, as in a mirror, we are changed into that same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of God. As you be, don't struggle not to stop the pawn. Don't struggle at all. Don't struggle. Just keep watching the pawn. Don't struggle. Just keep watching the pawn. Don't struggle. Just keep watching the pawn. But as you're watching the pawn, spend more time hearing the word. Spend more time. If you watch the pawn one hour, spend three, four hours just listening to the word of God. Take notes. Go get all my teachings on Christ. Just keep learning and learning and learning. After a while, you find out that your appetite for the pawn is dying and your appetite for the word of God is growing. Before you know it, you when when you even see pawn, you will be irritated because the word of God will kill that appetite completely. What Pastor Albert Amina said was quite emphatic, I would say, because he clearly states that you shouldn't stop what it is you are doing or try to stop it. But even while you are doing it, which you should continue doing, but spend more time considerably in listening to his message compared to the time you spend in pornography. Now, of course, when we talk about the subject of uh, masturbation, which is what we are looking at as well here in this context, I think it's really important that I make the connection about both of them because one leads to the other in a way i would say for a fact there wouldn't be masturbation without imagination and for there to be an imagination sometimes it has to come with a physical experience or it has to come with that which actually exists on the virtual network so i believe those who are watching me right now are probably mature people in case you came into this video by mistake i'm sorry that i'm having this conversation because even while i'm speaking imagery is building in your mind and just for me to even make it clear that i think he's talking about pastor about i mean even though he doesn't mention a name factually this is reverend kesiana himself also talking about the same subject and how he got to react to it a preacher will come on public social media to begin to tell people that if you are struggling with pornography keep watching the more you watch the more you watch, my God, I was angry. You are leading people into the consistent, perpetual enslavement of immorality in the name of grace. What rubbish, lascivious grace is that? Every time Jesus met somebody, we say, go and sin no more. No more. Don't sin again. But a preacher who claims to be a preacher is telling people, continue watching. As you are watching, be listening to my messages. As you are listening to my messages, the appetite will be dying. What a fallacy. A mutant is speaking. Someone that another spirit has given birth to. Now the consequence of that deviation from original design is now in verse 5. The Bible says, wickedness now filled the earth. Wickedness. Because sin is like a virus. It spreads. Okay, so now it makes sense that indeed this is targeted at Pastor Abodamina. Now, what Pastor Abodamina himself said, is it wrong or is it right? You could tell your comments and you could tell your opinions in the comment section. Now, I know, of course, Abodamina followers, if we don't take it easy, you will just be replying everybody and this. Say what you believe, have interesting conversations without having to call each other names because I see that a lot in the community relax but what do i think about this now i know what pastor badamina himself is driving at with what he's saying there when it comes to channeling your desires he knows one thing for a fact when it comes to the subject of addiction when you have gotten to that point whereby you are dealing with an addiction it is something that is fully to a great extent difficult to break away from because it's now connected to your desire psychologically L let me get to read what addiction itself means more like the dictionary meaning so we get exactly what we are driving at here so what is addiction so addiction is when you have a strong physical or psychological need or urge to do something or use something it is a dependence on a substance or activity, even if you know that it causes you harm. It can impact your daily life. It can impact your daily life. 
Now, understanding this particular concept, now, Pastor Robert Damina saying that you should continue watching, that in itself as well right there is a wrong statement to make. But of course, come on, it's Pastor Robert Damina. He can say whatever he feels like saying, but of course, trying to negate or balance it as well with the idea of continue what you are doing. Even if I tell you to stop, I know you would continue. While you are doing what you are doing, and spending more time as well in the word of God. Now, him talking about the word of God, like I'll put it here, is looking at the idea of listening to his messages. So he believes that in his messages as well, while listening to him, to a great extent as well, you to a great extent you would gradually see yourself giving up the desire that actually does control you because that's where the subject matter of this whole thing gets to control and that's also what pastor chris gets to teach when it comes to his subject of masturbation not being a sin around the whole idea of control now we are going to go into scriptures but i'm just trying to have a conversation here one thing i know about desires as a person is for you to actually kill a desire or an addiction you have to pr build another addiction or another desire that can replace that do you understand so even though he would know that selling you outrightly, hey, don't do this because I remember side looking at it from the context of your coach, which he uses the word coach, which is which should be more like your teacher, should not lead you towards lasciviousness. And lasciviousness itself is actually a very big word, which also leads to that uncontrollable nature, that lawlessness as well when it comes to how you get to behave um, as a Christian your coach should not be the one telling you to continue in what it is you're doing because whether you like it or not just like paul himself was accused or what i say purportedly misinterpreted in scripture now some preachers hold the notion that for them to be preaching the message of grace if they are not being accused or what i say purported to be giving people a license to sin maybe they haven't even preached the way paul preached because that was a seeming insinuation about his person that he's giving people a license or would i say giving them that free will for them to go into sin so someone that is in that position that is being seen to be encouraging people to sin would be like oh okay if i'm being accused the way paul is accused in scripture then of course that means i'm doing the right thing but there's a thin line of course in this but him saying that the person of pastor but damina is in the league of the devil or is working for satan because of that that I also have a problem with. But the thing is that I don't have, with, with all of my conversations as well here on the platform about things happening in church, I don't speak to you as a pastor, or as an apostle, or as this. So probably he has that right as a person to say that, okay, this person or someone like this, let me not say pastor about the mina per se, even though you can deductively reason of who he's talking about based on his terrain where he comes from, why he's also speaking what he's speaking and just the environment is exposed to or something you know that is actually a strong statement if i allow you you become lascivious you'll be sinning as a hobby and you think somebody should congratulate you because you're sinning your coach needs to be hard to insist that you walk righteously when you grow into maturity, you will thank me. You will not thank me when it's difficult. Are you there? Yes, so when you hear a preacher say, if you are hooked up on pornography, <laughs> continue watching, but keep coming to church. He works for Satan. You can't say it, but I'm called to say it. He's in league with the prince, with Bezebub. Because you need to know the reason for which Jesus came. Have you read the scripture that says, For this purpose the Son of Man was made manifest? Why? That he might do what? Even though works is in plural, if you read that scripture in context, what he calls the works of the devil is sin. So it means sin should reign as long as Jesus has not come. The evidence that Jesus has come to your life has come to my life is that sin cannot reign that's the proof that the son of man was made manifest that's the proof that he was made manifest 
when I'm 89, 90, I will, I will raise my right hand and say, if there's any woman I touched in my pilgrimage, because I know how much, I'll, how long I will live. The woman should disgrace me. The proof that I did not touch any woman. Eh? What that is saying is that Jesus came to me. The Son of Man was manifested to me. And the proof is that I lived above sin. Are you there? Pastoring is a burden. The people that listen to you will see you on the other side of this divide. When I stand on the island of light, I need to see you there. Now, there is one of his sons that has been brought in the mix of this whole conversation, um, Joel Ogebe, who had some things to say about Pastor about Damina as well. Let me play the clip here for a while. Do you know one thing? You are the one calling him Satan. Jesus still loves that man. <laughs> Paul was killing Christians. Jesus loved him. He's causing damage. He got... Jesus is the Lord of the church. If the gate of hell cannot prevail over the church that Jesus has built, what is somebody? Oh, the man's wrong doctrine. When people speak like this, you just you can see the spirit. They think they are very religious as people, but you can see what is inside them. Some people are sending me, oh, pro pro prophet, you need to say something. So you can reply this person. I looked at that and I laughed. <laughs> Do you know where I'm communicating from? <laughs> Don't think you know me because you, you see me on Facebook. We know how many people appear in the radiance of light where God has raptured us in. There is an age in body and there is an age in light. And guess what? It is the domino effect. It is the same character the Muslims have that we are gradually gravitating to. Where we think to do God a favor, we need to kill another person. Uh, these are the people that they see a harlot. You are sitting with him. He will say, if this man is a prophet, why is he sitting with the harlot? As long as someone doesn't outrightly denies Jesus, like outrightly say, Jesus is not the son of God. He didn't come in the flesh. He didn't die or exorate. That person still has hope in Christ. And as long as that person is not dead, there is still hope in Christ. So guess the people that restore such, such types of persons, say them that are spiritual. If you are not spiritual, keep quiet. The spiritual people do their work. They feel because they can speak Bible, you know, they can speak Bible English. Oh, according to the doctrine, they keep quiet. Let spiritual people do their work. Hello, hello, alemona. We're trying to cause the we're trying to bring the body of Christ to where it will heal. We've not grown for too long in Africa. Hey, look, look, this one is Satan, this one is this one is a false. He, look at this preacher, he, he, he means he's a devil. How are you different from him? Why are you calling him Satan? Are you speaking by the Spirit of the Lord? No, he's a devil, he's the Antichrist. Look at how little you are. When the real Antichrist come, can you speak? <laughs> you hide somewhere in your fancy or on, on phone. You see me physically, you can't talk to me. <laughs> You're not afraid. You know, social media has made a lot of people think that because they sell social media, it means we are, you know, I'm not a cowardly young man. Except you don't know me from anywhere. I'm not a coward. I'm not someone who's looking for people's endorsement and help. Last I checked, I've never messaged. I don't operate that way. Anybody who knows me knows that. God has given me the heart of a soldier. What I confront in a daily, on a daily basis, most of people, they see they will die. <laughs> you hide on your phone now. Give you 48 hours. <laughs> you have mercy on the Lord.
now i'm not trying to bring this whole contention as if the remnant community is having an issue or something because of course you can have a different opinion from the person you look up to or the person that is your father i do understand that happens of course in the faith but what he gets to say about the person of pastor of Odamina is quite interesting coming from him considering what his quote-unquote spiritual father has said about someone that is preaching like pastor about Amina, or would i say what others in the remnant clan have seen i've seen many remnant pastors and those who are connected to aramosai as well speaking vehemently about you know pastor about I mean, like apostle gideon himself would speak and even tell that about I mean, I should actually be coming to him to come and learn you know when uh, one noise maker came the other time and started shouting 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 so i taught them they are preaching my message i'm a master in it i'm like uh -huh. and the one you want to do now you are not learning it well my people say oh boy your neighbor john that means that the soup is not good and it's not enough The soup you have made now is bad. Eh? And it's also not enough. We are trying to manage it to eat the honor. 40% the, into the honor, soup has finished. And it's not as if the soup was even good to start with. So I said you should come and sit down and learn. Because a novice is not allowed to be a minister. If you were preaching error for so long, and you suddenly now say you have found the truth, you should sit down for long and learn the truth before you start jumping around. If somebody were to come out from Jehovah's Witnesses and to now say, I have become a Christian, but when I was in Jehovah's Witness, I was leading an assembly. Now I become a Christian. Do we give you a microphone the next day? No. If you say you have been preaching error for all these decades, and now you are coming to preach the truth, and we say, come and sit down and learn. Because you are a novice in this thing. For long. Now, it's now all about who has been doing this for this long or who has been, you know, did that whole idea of comparison. Do you understand? I don't, if you see it subtly, that's exactly what I see. But I wouldn't want to go into that deeply. Let's get back as well to the bone of contention right here. Ebo Damina is going beyond, would I say, the confines of church organogram or what i say the confines of church and he's really getting into the world if i'm to put it that way he's on radio stations like what you call secular radio stations he's on podcasts like many pastors are like why would a pastor be going for podcasts the last time i checked even the person of abioye recently was on a podcast okay probably that is like a christian podcast the main thing is that whether you are here or here i think the message of the gospel should be reaching to the ends of the earth to the world so whether you are on a channel that is a christian postcard channel or whether you are on a secular podcast channel the main thing is having an audience which is very important and also how you get to bring the message of christ to that audience whether they are exclusively christians or would i say there are also people in the secular world so People that have an issue with him being on radio stations or on podcasts, you might have to rethink as well about that because we are supposed to go to the end of the earth with, you know, the message of Christ. But looking at the bone of contention here, I have said it as well emphatically that the question you would ask yourself is that would Jesus or would any of the apostles tell you to continue doing what you are doing, even though you are supposed to replace your desires with the desires of like we know in scripture, abide in me and I would abide in you. There has to be that intentional effort for you to actually seek and desire to abide in Christ. So where he is very correct is the fact that, okay, listen to my messages and gradually as well that particular grip or control this desire has over you or this thing you were struggling with would gradually begin to fade away. Now, one thing I know for a fact is that it is easier to tell someone go and see no more now the woman that was caught in adultery and brought to jesus with respect to what happened there and no one was able to stone her when he looked at the woman and told her go and see no more whether you like it or not as well your actions is also very important as to what defines sin itself let me tell you where i'm coming from i don't want to take a whole lot of time you think i'm mad don't you i'm not mad i'm just telling you how i feel right now the Bible tells me, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. 
You know what that means? If any man gets up to preach, let him preach like God's doing the preaching. Say what God would say. Say it in the way God would say it. Don't apologize for God. Folks, I'm not apologizing for the Bible or anything it says. I'm here to proclaim it and lift it up. Because if you hear that, it will save your soul. But again, as well, there's also a different perspective to this, looking at Jesus himself and his teaching when it comes to that which does defile us or what is being defined, quote and unquote, as sin. Because whether you like it or not, for there to be an act, there has to be an intention. When the intention itself is wrong ab initio, then the act itself as well conforms to the intention but that a particular act itself does exist doesn't mean that that act itself in itself is seen this is what i mean now listen to this example to make it clear so that someone goes to go and steal bread to eat the act of stealing itself is wrong but the person eating bread itself is not wrong because eating is something natural that the body itself has to fulfill but the act of what is being done itself stealing itself is wrong but also in the part of the act that has been done one act the act of eating itself is not wrong but stealing itself is sin so while there exists acts that would be considered as being seen either seen against the body or seen against god you also have to be able to distill while you are analyzing and trying to understand your place in God, what itself is wrong or what itself is not wrong. Now, one thing that is important for us to really recognize and appreciate is that, now one thing we have to appreciate as well in this conversation is that the knowledge that pornography itself is wrong, the knowledge or the consciousness that masturbation itself is wrong, even though, you know, Pastor Chris would say it is not a sin in the sense, is actually a good step because there are many people that indulge in such acts that do not believe that there's anything wrong with it. So for you to even recognize that this itself here is wrong. It's a good step as well to the journey of breaking free away, breaking free from it. Now, and there are people that do something not because it's a habit or pattern they have built over time in their life, but because there's actually quote and unquote a spirit behind it. Now, I am of this particular school of thought that for you to actually be a believer saved by the grace of God. I guess you know in Christianity, if you are not being observant, there's a faction that believes that you cannot be possessed of an evil spirit being a Christian and having Christ living in you. There's a faction that believes that even though you were a Christian, you can still be possessed by evil spirit. That's where the subject of if deliverance ministries like you see happen people say that casting out demons if it's of god or not of god but that, that's not a conversation we are having today the point i'm trying to make right here is that there are some kind of characters that exist or a particular person can display not because it's a habit they have built over time that has now taken control of them but because there's a spirit that is behind that particular attitude that the person is not even in control of himself anymore like the you can look at the example of let's say the man that jesus cast out demons from into swines he was acting very uncontrollably out of himself so from wherever damina himself is coming from that intentionality of desiring the word of God or that intentionality of really desiring that relationship with God in contrast to your desires for, for fulfilling the gratifications of your flesh. One thing it does as well is imbibe in you the desires of God because the more you get to open yourself to the revelations of God's word through his word, what happens at that time is that you really get to understand his desires for you, even his own desires himself, and that becomes a part of you. Like, come on, the scripture says that be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So as we get to renew our mind, every time I think the scriptures itself in what is one book that doesn't seem to be like you picking a regular book and then reading and passing it on because each time you get to open the scriptures read it or you are listening to a teacher that like the scripture says how would you know except there be a teacher to teach you so in as much as you expose yourself to spirit-filled messages depending on who you give your ears to because you could give your ears to false teachers as well and you see where it's leading it to in as much as you get to also read the word yourself you keep renewing your mind, even though you might still 
be susceptible to those addictions that already exist by a result of the patterns you have built in your life by being indulgent or would I say indulging in this particular act. In this case, it's what we are looking at just, let's say, pornography itself or, or masturbation because one leads to the other. One is more like the end of <laughs> the other, which is beginning, I would say. But just note as well, my dear friends, even though we are talking about these subjects, there are many other things. There are people that are addicted to food. There are people that are addicted to, let's say, uh, betting, gambling. There are people that, that addiction itself is all about control. Whatever takes control over you, that even your desire for the things of God, which you know should be your default settings as a christian because most time as well it is real it is most time it is christians who really love god that get to struggle with these things and just wonder what is really going on i love god enough too much and i still desire the things of god but it's as if i can't control myself as well with these desires that so easily beget me that is also very genuine that you are not numb or that you are sober Let's say you are someone who is an alcoholic, that you are not numb to the idea that this itself is wrong. It's a very good thing because there are people that get so out of control that they become indifferent. That's where like lawlessness sets in. There's no point of even having that moral compass that this particular act itself is wrong. So one thing I believe in is the fact that dealing with addiction is something that until we get to accept and believe the fact that we cannot do it on our own. No matter how we say, okay, I have guardrails here. You know exactly what leads you from here to here. One thing with any form of addiction is patterns. And I've trained myself a lot as well to really understand how to study patterns. So even if I'm studying myself, I get to really understand that, George, if you do this, it's going to lead you to this. You're going to lead it to this. So when you sit down and do that conscious evaluation of your actions and that which is, you know, becoming or taking control over you, you start dealing with the symptoms of that which actually leads to what it is you know itself is sin. Because like we would be reading here in scripture, it is that, of course, which comes out of you that defiles you, not that which comes into you. And it's going to make sense as we get to look at this scripturally. So. Aside looking at the conundrum between them and then Eber Damina being labeled to be, if I'm to look at it this, in this context, being labeled to be, you know, of a devil. Is he being labeled to be of a devil because of what he has said at that point or just that his entire ministry and persona is of a devil? That's why I don't get into that particular context of really who am I, by the way, to be saying this, but I have to say it to my audience because I have a following. I don't get to that particular point of, really defining someone in entirety to be this or that. I don't have that uh, uh, calling, okay? What I, what I know I have, is, what I know I can do is discuss facts without sentiment and deal with the issues and move on. In the end, God knows best. It's when you surrender to the Holy Spirit that He begins to give you the strategies that are peculiar to you. That is where the deliverance comes from. As you tell the Lord your fears and how helpless you are, He may tell you, take a 21 days fast. That 21 days fast, the level of power that will be released, you would never have sensed it before and it will break you out. Now, if you go to somebody else who is suffering from masturbation and you tell him the cure for masturbation is 21 days fast, you'll be sure. He will do 21 days fast and become stronger in masturbation. Because the power is not in 21 days fast. The power is in the fact that you surrender to the Lord and the Lord prescribed a strategy to deliver you. It's like medical diagnosis. Somebody can have pains on the head. That pain can be stress. Paracetamol handles it. Somebody else can have pain on the head. That pain can be a growth. It will take a CT scan and it will take, you know, operation to, to control that growth. So it's not just about the pain. It's about the diagnosis. It's about the, the treatment that follows. You went to the Lord. You surrendered to the Lord. He prescribed a fast. Another person will have to make that decision and also go to surrender to the Lord in truth and in genuineness. And God may tell that person, worship me for seven days. God may tell that person, like God's servant said, pray in tongues for one hour, for one moment. And the, the, the thing breaks. So you've got to learn to surrender to God. Show God your helplessness. Don't come and show God you're a superstar. When we come out, we can boast to devils that we can do all things. But when we come to God, we fall before Him in brokenness. He's the one that prescribes what we must do. And it's in doing it that we are delivered. 
but one thing i would also want to encourage christians if there's anyone as well watching that probably has an addiction that dealing with it's important that dealing with guilt that comes from addictions to what you know rightly is wrong it is important that dealing with addictions which you know that this of course this addiction itself is wrong whether it's harming your body or whether i say harming your being a hindrance to your spiritual growth with god it's important for you to know that this addiction reflects your poor work with God, not Christ himself. So I know the guilt would come from the whole idea of, oh, I am a professing Christian. People know me on the outside as well to be this and that. But on the inside as well, this is killing me. This is, you know, giving a wrong impression as well about who I am in Christ. Why? Because this should not, this is not reflecting the character of Christ. God, God cannot be mocked, but it's we getting to really understand that in our ability, we can do nothing, but it's his ability in us that worketh out the good. No one is good except God himself. I don't even consider myself to be someone that is of perfection or someone that is good. Even though you hear Romo Osai himself make emphatic statements about, you know, his sexual purity and all that, which I am not coming against in any way, okay? At least that is one aspect of what I say when it comes to his purported, let me call it sinlessness as well, that he gets to really emphasize on. Maybe because it's also something that people in his career are having issues with. And we have seen many scandals as well from people who are men of God and all that when it comes to their issues with women and sexual purity. It's actually indeed a fact. So, but when it comes to other aspects of life or what is self is considered sin, there could be other things that we don't know. But at least what he has made, not just once or twice, a reference to when it comes to his person and his sense of uh i wouldn't say righteousness his sense of right standing with god is in the aspect of you know him and women because probably he knows that many people in his career like i just mentioned have been once into that or probably would be into that in the future <laughs> so indeed as well that is also something important to note now this is one thing i believe about sexuality which i have wondered a bit about you see this desire sexual desires i believe was created for us to serve one another with it even though it leads to also procreation if that is the intent of engaging in that but again, please, I'm looking at it in the context of marriage. And that's why I believe, like many other people believe as well, I would say that it's very wrong or it is not okay to develop sexuality to the point whereby it is disconnected from those we were intended to share it with. So this also comes with the subject of lust. And this is what relates to the subject of, let's say, masturbation, where it's self-gratification, but it's totally disconnected as well from those we are supposed to share it with. And that's why sometimes as well, getting into the context of marital conjugal rights is more of like everybody is self-seeking, not serving one another. So is it possible to actually overcome addictions like, let's say, pornography, masturbation, uh, alcoholism, gambling, name it, that many addictions or even things you wouldn't even imagine that gets to control us. You know, please note that the center of this conversation is that which controls you. Even God, even in our relationship with God, God's desire is not to control us like a robot. The highest we have gone in our own human genuity is making robots that we get to control and how they could actually work and operate. But for God to create us and give us this gift of free will, think about to follow him or not to follow him. That's why we have people today that do not believe in God. And have you seen them being struck down or something? No. So having free will, but still deciding that even with your free will, you want to have a relationship with God. That is what God himself desires. So willingly as well, out of faith, you decide to follow him. So God himself is not even controlling you, but he wants you to desire him to the point whereby his desires becomes your desires. His heart and his concerns becomes your concern. But there's actually that intentional effort for you to draw nigh to me and i'll draw nigh to you so what point am i trying to make with this particular notion i'm saying here desiring god which more like is a christian hedonist kind of mindset whereby the pleasures of god as well becomes your pleasure i think is also very important in our christian work 
such that when we now talk about the subject of addictions or things that control us, it now weighs against God himself, who does not even desire to control us, but desires for us to have a relationship with him so that his desires as well becomes our desires. So you see now it's a different thing entirely. But we having this corruptible body as well, sometimes we can fall into sin and sometimes as well those sins that we fall into consistently as well can become an addiction but where we have a problem is when there is that control over us because this is for my fellow brothers and sisters in christ and it's coming with a little bit of violence please sir please ma are you a christian because if you are stop confusing us we see you in church on sunday your hands are lifted we see you praying in tongues we see you writing in church but by monday evening we see something else on your status by wednesday you're in the club by friday what you are wearing we cannot believe please which one are you can you pick one you're a christian brother and we don't know who you are leading on this morning is shadi next month is jacinta brother what's going on you see one thing that comes with the life of christ being a christian is something called christian conduct and character if you've read your Bible very well, you will see that in the book of Galatians, the Bible talks about bearing the fruits of the spirit, not the fruits of the flesh. You can't be a growing Christian and consistently be living in the fruits of the flesh. You cannot continue to give works of the flesh and be proud and boast in your chest that I am a Christian. Now, do those things stop you from being a Christian? No, but they stop you from enjoying the fullness of the inheritance that God has for you in Christ Jesus. I have a message from you directly from Jesus himself. He said I should tell you something. Book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 15. Open your Bible, you're a Christian. I know your deeds. This is Jesus. He didn't say I know your heart. Because some of you will come and say, the way I dress is my own manner. God sees the heart, not the clothes. Look at what the Bible says here. Jesus says, I know your deeds. Did say your heart? What do you call deeds? Your workings, your doings. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. He says, I wish you were either one. And me too, I wish. So, because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Please speak one. If you are cold, let's be praying for you and we can instruct you in righteousness or please be hot so that our prayers will reach the people that really need it what am i saying believer you're a christian act like it brother you're a christian be a christian in word and in deed sister you're a christian please you're not a jesus but there's no way in the gospel from genesis to revelation that any sister in christ in the world was a body you are not a jesus body in jesus name amen you are a daughter of god you are daughters of sarah we are modest we wear full clothes amen that's why i came here with bishop Kola today be a christian sister jokes aside everyone please bear the fruits of the christian life that you preach if you know a friend that should hear this, send it to them. Tell them I said so. Bye. The popular saying, no man is perfect, makes a lot of sense if we get to understand that perfection itself is not attainable. But if we chase it, it builds in us the spirit of excellence that to a great extent we become thriving in many things we do. Why? Because we are to a great extent intentionally chasing that right standing whether it's with god that we believe in and even if you don't believe in god if it is with the things you are doing trying to make sure you are doing it well because you know what is the right thing to do you build in yourself a character that always pursues excellence even though you don't most times achieve the optimal perfection that is required in what you know is the optimal requirement so yes let's not stop chasing quote and unquote perfection because in er inherent in that attitude builds in us the spirit of excellence now let's look at this scripture that jesus was using to teach about purity so i use the nlt bible as well so even the title of this particular chapter is jesus teaches about inner purity okay but i'm not going to read as well from the beginning because it was all about his own uh, uh, his own altercation as well with the pharisees or what i say the teachers of religious law with respect to what they believed in and how 
you know they were still going against the same law that they are teachers of but the point is what i want to look at as well here is from verse um, 16 so matthew 15 from verse 16. now i've seen many preachers as well preach with the scripture but i see it differently as well myself based on how i understand scripture so jesus himself said when peter was asking him peter asked him from verse 15 then peter said to jesus explain to us the parable that says people aren't defiled by what they eat so jesus now decides to explain that particular parable jesus says don't you understand yet jesus asks anything you eat passes through your stomach and goes to the sewer pure logic you eat and then it ends up where it's supposed to end up but the words you speak come from the heart that is what defiles you so he went from talking about what you eat something purely physical you know then going of course right here to the words that you speak of course our words are powerful which is quite important but the words you speak is that which comes from our heart in our meditations that of course which we are we know just why as we renew our mind as well by the word of god it also gets to to a great extent affect our desires that of course which we speak that of course which we believe because anything of course we get to do comes from our inner convictions do you understand before you actually go to decide to click on the screen go to a pornography website stay there and be watching and then decide to do this everything comes from that inner act is you are not a robot it comes from that your inner desire you do it intentionally but if you are filled if your heart is filled with the word of god if your heart is filled with the desires of god as well as you get to be the relationship with him which i get from whatever that mina was trying to say spend more time here you see that the time of course you would want to have for this one would be gradually gradually you know over what jesus himself says here makes sense at least you wouldn't question jesus right but the words you speak from your heart but the words you speak come from your heart that is what defiles you verse 19 for from the heart comes evil thoughts murder adultery sexual immorality theft lying slander so for you to have evil thoughts it will lead to an evil act but he now goes for as well to break it down murder listen murder itself is an act it happens for you to be murder it's one thing for you to be thinking of killing someone in your mind and actually doing it but according to scriptures even from the thought of you thinking of that you have seen before the act is even even happens adultery adultery itself is an act but jesus talked about looking up onto a woman lustfully even when when we were talking about the person of our um, aramosai and all that when he was talking about his you know him not sleeping with women and all i think i even gave you a proof when it comes to the subject of you know lost <laughs> with respect to him but again that was a previous conversation and all sexual immorality all sexual immorality like how we are looking at masturbation right now as well or maybe looking at this subject of pornography do you understand okay and then theft itself which is an act but again he's he's looking at the root so it's one thing for you to be looking at as well causes and effect on the other hand as well you are looking at how your relationship with god deals with the causes and effects of that as well which has to do with your body these are what defile you he now goes on to say here eating with unwashed hands will never defile you think about this as well eating with unwashed hands will never defile you now eating itself wouldn't defile you but eating with unwashed hands which in itself is wrong would not defile you think about that for a moment is eating wrong no but if you are eating with unwashed hands you know that this is self right here it's supposed to be it's something wrong it's it's it, it works against your body you can actually get sick from that so what then defines defilement is it that as well which has to do with your inner person or your outward person which is your body if you eat as well without washing your own you're eating dirty you would get sick you will have you know and then the effect of that would come but what jesus himself is looking at is not really on the outside of what it is you do that affects your body but to a great extent as well what happens on the inside the inner purity because it's from that particular inside that what we now do gets to manifest so you get the concept of why pastor chris would say masturbation itself the act itself because he even went as far as defining it the act itself is not a sin the subject of masturbation not being a sin i listened to the full clips i even watched many videos of him answering that question he always talks about the act 
and then the effect but he never talks about the cause because one thing that leads to that is pornography itself leads, can lead to that but him talking about the effect now he focuses on the fact that when you are doing that to the point whereby it controls you then we have a problem but in it itself is not sin now remember A sensuous feeling is not necessarily a sin. A sensuous desire is not necessarily a sin. In fact, it's not a sin. In the same way that sin consciousness is not a sin. You can have sin consciousness, the consciousness of sin, whereas you have not sinned. And that's actually the problem with a lot of people. There is no way in the word of God that suggests that masturbation is a sin. Because it's a pleasure that you derive for yourself. Now, here, here is something that's very important. Just because somebody enjoys something doesn't mean he's going to continue doing it. Now, there are many of you who are actually bound by a spirit of masturbation. So, is there such a spirit? Oh, yes. Anything we continue to do and allow to control us will become an opportunity for Satan to seize the mastery in that area over us. Whether it's soft drinks you like to take, you can become as bound as someone who's an alcoholic. You see it? Anything that you let control you will eventually control you. There are people who may masturbate and not be controlled by masturbation. Because it's a purely essential feeling. And it's your own body. And it's not the abuse of the body because you actually, like I said, it's a sensual uh, pleasure that you're deriving. So, you are not abusing yourself as some people say you are abusing yourself. It's not self-abuse. The problem is when that masturbation becomes a controller of your actions because it can control you. And once it begins to control you, you almost can do without it. It's like a guy who cannot do without smoking. It's like a guy who cannot do without drinking. So anything that you let control you will eventually control you. And once you are controlled by anything, you have opened the door for satanic manipulation. And once Satan begins to manipulate your life, you got trouble. And there is where the real danger is. And that danger is in anything. So what you have to do with your life is to let nothing dominate you. Anything that you do without control, that means that you let control you and you're not controlling it. You're not in charge will eventually control your life and dominate you. And so that's where the problem of masturbation really is. Because it's something that, you know, the more pleasure you derive from it, the more you want to do it. For example, there are those who stick something into your, to their ears, they always enjoy it. And because of that, they're forever doing it. And so masturbation can also become a habit. And when it becomes a habit, there is where you lose control of yourself. There is where you lose control of yourself and then it becomes a problem. So whatever it is, no matter the sensual, sensual um, feeling that you get in anything, don't let it control you. It's so important. Don't let it control you. Sometimes we eat because we just enjoy the tastes, even though what we're eating has no nourishment of any kind. We just enjoy the taste. So we've given that over to our taste buds. I remember somebody, a, a minister of God one time, a man of God, he said God told him to stop taking coffee. Now God didn't tell everybody to stop it, but God told him to stop it. God can tell you to stop masturbation. God can tell you to stop anything. Because it may be dangerous for you. Because God doesn't like anything to control you. But whether masturbation itself is a sin, it's not a sin, but don't let it control you. Uh, there's a word in the scripture that's used in several verses. It's the word lasciviousness. And lasciviousness actually, uh, from the Greek word aselgeia, means wantonness, lewdness, absence of restraint, insatiable desire for pleasure, and licentiousness. Now, when you have those words in your mind, from that very word lasciviousness, it will help you understand better um, what I want to explain to you here. The first 
One is Ephesians chapter 4, verse 19. And I'll read from the Amplified Version. In their spiritual apathy, they have become callous and past feeling and reckless and have abandoned themselves a prey to unbridled sensuality, eager and greedy to indulge in every form of impurity that their depraved desires may suggest and demand. It emphasizes an unrestrained way of living. We're talking about lasciviousness here. Another, another portion is 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 3. By the way, the word lasciviousness you will not find in the Amplified Version just gives you those uh, expressions that are used in defining the word. Otherwise, you'll find the word particularly in the King James Version. So what I might do is read the King James Version first and then read the Amplified. I'll go back to the, um, to the last one I just read to you, which is Ephesians chapter 4 verse 19. King James, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. See, then compare that to the to what I read to you in the Amplified. Now I want to read another one, 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 3 from the King James first. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness. Lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. It says when we walked in lasciviousness. Now, how does Peter, how does the Amplified explain this? It's for the time that is past already suffices for doing what the Gentiles like to do, living as you have done in shameless, insolent wantonness. It says shameless, insolent wantonness. Then the last one is Jude. It has only one chapter. And we are reading verse 4. It says, For certain men have crept in stealthily. Let me read the King James first. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God in our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, from the Amplified, the same verse, For certain men have crept in stealthily, gaining entrance secretly by a side door. Their doom was predicted long ago on godly, impious, profane persons who pervert the grace, the spiritual blessing and favor of our God into lawlessness and wantonness and immorality and disown and deny our soul master and Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Now, all of this, goes on to explain something to us about unrestrained desire because you remember we defined masturbation as stimulating your own genitals for sexual pleasure now the desire here is for your own sensual feeling the problem is when this goes to become unrestrained that's why i said it's walking a tightrope when it becomes unrestrained it's your own body so at that point, you haven't seen it. It's when this thing now takes a hold of your heart. For example, if you went into a shop and picked an item mistakenly and went home with it and didn't pay for it, and you got home and found out you picked that item mistakenly from the shop, have you stolen? Not really. God's not going to hold you guilty of stealing. You may not even be uh, charged for stealing if you found out that you had it and then took it back if you returned it to say i mistakenly took this thing and i want to return it now in some cases returning it may even be difficult maybe because of damage or loss but because your heart didn't have the motive of stealing it you report it even though you took that thing, you took that item from the shop and went home with it without paying for it, you haven't stolen because your heart didn't intend stealing. You didn't covet that material to steal it. Now, what if you took it and you did the same thing 
But the state of your heart was the intent to keep it for yourself. The intent to take it and have it for yourself. Now the intent in your heart has changed everything. That's why Jesus said what I want to read to you now. In St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 7, from verse, I read to you from verse 18. And he said unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entered into the man, it cannot defile him? Because it entered not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the draught, purging all the meats. Now, in verse 20, and he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, and so on. He says, for from within the heart. You see, it has to do with the heart. The question is, even though the act itself has no problem, what's the state of your heart? It's the state of your heart that will determine whether or not you got this problem. And that's why you must purify your heart, purify your mind. That's what he was looking at. Now, do I believe that masturbation itself right here is a sin? Of course, in the context of sin, it's a sin. The question you'll be asking yourself right here, is it a sin against God or is it a sin against our body? Do you understand? But when you now look at what is the cause of it, you'll now be asking yourself, but when you now look at the cause, what leads to that and what also is the effect of that, then you are looking at sin itself right here on a bigger scale. But again, the act of it as well, is it sin? In the end, of course, then we are talking about sin here. So you see, that's where we have this uh, bone of contentions of soul that happens in the body of Christ. But what is most important as well here is that inner purity because from that inner convictions we have defines as well what we get to do. So if you being a Christian, if you actually building a relationship with God, builds that inner convictions. Because when it comes to your spiritual life, it's, it's not something physical that is just about you standing one place and kabashing and all that. No. When it comes to your spiritual life, it's something that has an inner working before it even has an outward uh, manifestation. It starts from an inner working, renewing your mind, building up yourself in the most holy faith before it even has that outward working. So you, your outward working and outward appearance and outward reflection comes a lot from your inward witness. So if Pastor Albert Davina is saying, don't stop that which you are doing, that itself is wrong because even you doing that as well comes from an inner witness and inner conviction that, you know, makes you want to do it, that inner desire. But if he's also trying to balance it by saying that while you spend your time doing this as well, spend your time with the desire of spend your time listening to me spend your time you know getting to know god then gradually as well this as well would be you know living your life then that is where you can also have an excuse for him that he's also projecting but for you to actually say that hey don't do this is someone would say it's more easier said than done that is what would be expected stop doing this but do this but i think you have heard that of course too much so him trying to say don't struggle if he said as well, don't give your attention to trying to stop it, but give your attention to wanting to know God the more, listening to his word, listening to my messages, that would be a good one as well to say. Why? Because you are not giving attention to that particular desire. Like I always say, attention is currency. What you give attention to becomes current in your life. I could be doing anything else now and I'm here shooting a video. But you see, how I have get, gotten to deal with things that you know, take my time because now we are looking at the subject of time and all. how I get to deal with things that I see to be wrong in my life is personally being able to replace the time I spend to do that or the desires I have for that with other desires. For the one thing you don't know that for those who have been here with me longer over the years, we, we were never like this for those who have been here longer. But over time as well, this channel or this platform has gotten me more interested and more in tune with that which I left long ago. I used to be like, you know, Bible, Griffey kind of thing, kind of person, but I had to like 
go back and then just be like let me be a normal person but again that desire came back gradually over time as i started discussing about faith conversations and with that as well i now started feeling like okay probably there are people that listen and want to really know what i think about opinions before i wouldn't come here and try to say okay i'm doing scriptural exegesis of something i just deal with the controversy this person i think is right this person i think is wrong but i don't really get to say what i think why because i feel like nobody would want to listen to what i think about something but over time as well when i see that okay people really want to know what i think then what would i do i start also getting to ask when i started sharing me sharing now as well now leads me to also doing deeper study and trying to also know the will of god when it comes to my personal convictions with scripture but i wouldn't tell someone to take what i say hook line and sinker also do your own personal investigation because one thing i believe in is that you cannot be tossed here and there when you know the word of god for yourself and you stand by it no matter what your teacher teaches you you being like that barian christian to really study to show yourself approved do you understand so that is what i have to say in this context i would say i don't know if i've been able to actually make any point but one thing is very much important god is really concerned about our inner purity as well a whole lot compared to how we um feel that in our act we are perfect because if he can be in charge on the inside you don't want you don't have to worry about the outside but if you want to be in charge of the outside of the perception that people would have about you based on your act the question you have to ask yourself is who is in charge on the inside is there still pride is there pride somewhere are you dealing with lust but nobody knows but only you know let him take charge let, let him take charge of the inner part of you but for that to happen as well you have to really you have to start saturate your mind and emotions with his desires drawing onto him as he draws onto you abiding in him as he abides in you for there to be that inner working but for you to actually deal with an addiction that has built patterns in your life that has built patterns in your flesh that knows how to get in that knows most importantly is when is when the the devil is able to really understand how to really get you on that level and capitalizes on that for you to deal with addiction to a great extent it takes total surrender but even in doing so as well replacing your the, your desires with his own desires and drawing near to him and one way of course to do that is immersing yourself in the word of god and to a great extent jesus would always be lord over our lives our desires our convictions and how we can be a better version of ourselves the grace of god is indeed very sufficient tap into that grace amen see you in my next video the name is george